Welcome to the Real Talk Weekly Podcast, where we discuss news, culture, life, and dive into deep conversations about our faith. Here's your host, Alan Reed. Beyond Meat COO arrested for body man's nose off after Razorback game. That's a local story yeah, right local. there, folks. I saw that, yeah. Local, late breaking. Yep. Doctor late finds late. 55 batteries in woman's body. What? And Lecrae endorses Charged. healthy deconstruction that embraces scripture. Christ himself did this. Ooh. Cool. We'll see about that. Um, we're going to discuss this and more on today's Real Talk Weekly Podcast. Hey, everyone. I'm Alan Reed, host of the show. Thanks for joining us today. And look at this. We have the whole crew here. The crew is The back. rumors of my demise were greatly exaggerated. Well, we didn't say that you We died. didn't say any rumors. We actually didn't tell why. Did you listen? <laughs> we didn't tell why. Oh, I, I listened to parts of it, but I didn't oh listen gosh. to all of it. No. What if you listen said. to parts, you listen. What rumors were circulating? Oh, yeah, more than I have. Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> I paused. I was like, should I say that? See, I didn't want to listen well, to a whole lot it. because I yeah. felt left out. Yeah. And like, because I wasn't here and I so saw the sensitive. articles and the topics you guys talked about and I was really jealous. Yeah. James is sensitive in a good way. He is. So. He is recovered. Mostly. Yeah. mostly. I am recovered. So we're going to get rolling. It was not COVID. Because James no. has to go away again. For <laughs> yeah, that's, just because why? that's what's funny is I've been gone because I've had this virus. His marriage and and so. then I said, uh, it's for someone's birthday. It's not for my marriage. <laughs> Um, Marriage but is good, though. I, I said, hey, I'm, I'm on vacation the day we record. And David just looked at me like, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> yes, I'm serious, but I'll come in and record. So yeah, I'm here. There he is. Oh, that's you're why not I'm, even working today? No, no. Oh, my. Where's our little soft pads? Oh, see? Clunk, see how clunk. loud that is? Yeah, it's so loud. All right, I have an icebreaker. Icebreaker. I purposely, a I pur- purposely did it. not tell you guys what it was. Ooh, okay. Because we're running out of ideas. Oh, hey, happy first day of fall, guys. Yeah. yeah. Wait, really? is it like... Officially. Isn't it like 90 degrees outside and it's the first day of fall? No, no have you not been chilly. outside? It's like How did you get degrees. here this morning? <laughs> it's a beautiful day. He, he zapped over. Here. Welcome back, James. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, what day is this? For those of you that are listening, we're running out of ideas for icebreakers, so feel free to send them our way. But I do have one today, you know and it is a would you rather. Ooh, Ooh, okay. Okay. These okay. are dangerous. Yeah, they are dangerous. And I'm just covering up because James likes to look at my notes. Cheater. Would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on your life? Rewind. Rewind. Easy. Wow, everyone <laughs> got that real quick. I think rewind. Why would you want a pause button? Because you have to start it again. Man, we're all maybe this way. Wait, hold on, so hold, hold on. I will say pause. Why? You're just saying pause okay. to be different. No, no, no. Because when I'm at, Obviously. okay, does the this is logistics I know, here. I know what you're going to say. Does the pause buttons pause time, or does it pause like Ooh. does it like freeze time? Well, yeah. What what else okay, would it pause? So then I would go rewind because if I could pause time. And be like on vacation forever. Uh, That'd be great. See, I figured you were going to say if you could pause time and be fishing. That's forever. what I'm saying. Like if oh, I'm, I'm going to be on the river. Or like one age. But it would be very unfortunate if the river was paused. Did you really well. expect some of us to, to go different on that? Did you really think this was going to be a hot topic? No, well, I didn't think it through, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, you need to get I was thinking about it, and, and I decided rewind, too, because... Like, I don't ever carry anything on me immediately. Like, yeah, I we know. Have my know. Never button. remember your keys. <laughs> I would have my pause button handy for when I needed it, because you, you would need that immediately. But a pause. rewind, it could be like, man, that was... That was if you regretted a dumb. conversation that it was an hour that. ago, you could still rewind and make it better. See, I don't think I want the rewind because of things I regret, but because I'm really sensitive to time escaping me. Like, mm-hmm. I just See, had this conversation. The you and I. <laughs> there's a lot of regrets. <laughs> yeah. You'd say I, I'm, I'm with Alan. Like, like there's, there's a lot of things I'd go back and be like, <laughs> yeah. nope, not doing that that way. No, yeah. I just want to like mistake. relive a family vacation again mm-hmm. that was special to me. And mm-hmm. you wouldn't want to do it over again. If Michael messed up and he. Maybe I would just rewind, 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 rewind. Yeah, suggest. And then you would no. just get madder and madder and madder at him because he kept making the same mistake. No, yeah. he would learn. Yeah. Yeah, he would learn. <laughs> <laughs> he learned the hard way. No, right, I'm so, just sensitive to time. So I think that's so you, that. you, you honestly would say the rewind button. Yeah. If you, if time and like everything stands still when you hit pause. Yeah. Like if you could pause I mean, but time, you wouldn't, but I don't. 
I don't know. I wasn't thinking beyond that because I wouldn't have rules back and like time. abuse yeah. the pause button. But David needs it to be overcomplicated I for him to make a decision. It, this I is really why do. would you rather is difficult. Right. It was. Darn it. I thought I was going to pick a good one. All right. Hey, the know, format of like our them. program, for those of you who are new, <laughs> is we have we offer up dishes and then the deep dish. The deep so dish. So we have three um, dishes today. These are stories that you are likely not to hear on the fake news networks. But you will hear him here, and, uh, and so Here's on the fake news network. Yeah, no, yeah. no, this is these are real stories. Fair and balanced show. What? These are real stories. I mean, these yeah. aren't made up. No, they're real. real That's stories, what I'm saying. Fake newscasters. That's yes. us. That's yeah. us. It's time for the dish. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Mine's local. You've probably heard about it. If you haven't, you might have seen it. Last week, Razorback game. Go Hawks. Yeah, <laughs> scary. Honestly, all of the events of last Saturday <laughs> led up to what happened. So the chief operating officer, Doug Ramsey, and uh, he works for Beyond, is this called Beyond Meat? Yeah, I thought you were about to say Beyonce, and I was like, no. what? What? <laughs> no, Beyond Meat, which is, you know, honestly, I watched a Trey Kenny, Kennedy video about this, and it makes sense. <laughs> The man works for a Beyond Meat company, and he's mm-hmm. at an Arkansas game. You can't live in Arkansas and not eat meat. Right. So that that was step one. That Basically, was the problem. Basically, Beyond there. Meat is if you've left anything in a refrigerator too long, it's beyond recognizable <laughs> meat. I th- I think that or, they're going for like veggies. Veg- oh, or yeah. that. <laughs> More like fake meat. Or like meat. special meats. Yeah. Special. Ew, yeah. So anyways, uh, he gets arrested last Saturday for biting a man's <laughs> nose in the parking garage trying to leave. Um, well, it was a little bit after the game ended, but trying to get out of the parking garage. And it was due to road rage. Wow. And it's not even like, like I'm trying to justify it. It's not even like that bad of road rage, but... Honestly, he bit someone. He right. bit it's someone. Pretty, yeah. yeah. And so um, then he also threatened to kill him. <laughs> that, it's kind of funny to me. And I, feel, I do feel bad. He's charges of terroristic threatening. Yep. That sounds Listen, like I mean, to we've be, all we've all been like, I'm going to kill you, you know, because somebody cut you off. I don't mm-hmm. I don't feel like I've said that. No, I don't think I've ever said it. But all of be, us run out of the studio. To be honest, <laughs> after that game on Saturday. Yeah. For, yeah, for probably worked posterity out. here, we were playing Missouri State, who yeah. is a Division Two team. And we kept losing. And we almost lost. So mm. if any game that would cause that kind of rage to permeate into your road rage, right? Mm, boy. And if you've been... I would bite someone's nose off, yeah, to be Yeah, if you've you. been meat insufficient, be, yeah, you know? Yeah. If you need to go beyond <laughs> it meat. It says he's true. the president CEO. Does it really mean he's like a right. vegetarian or vegan? I mean, I he could know. just he be... He doesn't look I like don't know. it. If you see a picture of him, he looks like a pretty big dude, actually. He's he actually looks, looking at a picture He right looks now. pretty intimidating. Hey, he lives locally, so I'm not going to say I don't get the biting thing. <laughs> have you ever bit somebody when you were no. fighting them? No. no. I don't no. even remember Can't biting anyone as a kid. I'm not a dog. I really preferred to bite styrofoam cups. Right, That was fun. I mean, but you think about Nobody? Mike Tyson. <laughs> no. Are you Mike getting Tyson into fights with styrofoam cups? Bit, no. Right? Evander Holyfield's. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. It's never been it's like a go-to. Rage. I guess it makes sense I've if, if you don't know how to channel your anger. Yeah. It just comes out and biting Can people? I tell you what turned that game around on Saturday? The Lord. I made something, yes. go, <laughs> I made something go viral. Alan Jackson. It was seen I, by tens and twelves of people. And it was Mandy Keeling said, let KJ be KJ. And so I hashtagged that. Uh-huh. And then as soon as people started liking it and responding to it, all of a sudden the game turned around. No, wow. I, I'm So you, I Mikey put that James. power in Mandy Keeling's hands. I think, I think it was Alan Jackson because I did. I was over listening to those announcers on ESPN. You know who you are. You were terrible. Yes, they were. Um, <laughs> they, uh, we stopped, we muted them and listened to Alan Jackson on vinyl. And as soon as we put that needle down on that record, the hogs started coming back. Yeah. So I think it's Alan Jackson. So please, please tell me that this includes a story where you put this out on social media and Alan Jackson responded. I wish. <laughs> but Because that's your I luck don't. lately. Every yeah, single superstar that you like at on social media, they get back to you. Yeah, that's true. Can you Try at it. Harry Styles for me? No. Oh I can't afford tickets. Was, I thought you liked <laughs> Niall Horan. I like them all. It was cool to see one of these viral news uh, articles come out nationwide in Arkansas. Um, okay, but here's awesome. here's my struggle. 
It's a bad story. Being born and raised in Arkansas, hey. it's everything that comes out of Arkansas hey. is bad. It, even, it's every, just all such an Arkansas story. It, it all, no, you know, it's... look at Trump. All news is good news. You <laughs> wow, know I mean? you went there. Just point Did you right just there. mute him? <laughs> no, but I almost did. <laughs> Now we're going to get one of those warnings about like yes. on Spotify where it says like, be knowledgeable about COVID-19. Now yep. it's going to be like, be knowledgeable about President Trump. No, right? it'll probably still say be knowledgeable about COVID-19. I guess not President Guys, Obama. I've never had Beyond Meat, but I know they do well in the stores. So if you should still want to try their right. food, try I say not. try it. Don't let really? one person. Well, yeah. this isn't a reflection of the products. This is a reflection of the dingling that bit someone. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. He did. They did have him step yeah. down. I feel so. like. Oh, they did. I feel like there's a stepping stone here. We've all heard about Soylent Green, right? Yes. It's people. Mm. Maybe Beyond Meat is, is people. Yeah. Ooh. And that's why Ew. he's biting people's noses. It's a cannibalist <laughs> burger. To all of our vegetarian <laughs> listeners, now we're going to fake news. It's still meat, though, to we're be fair. To, we yeah. trying to be, we want to be fair and balanced. Hugh yeah. Meat. Hugh Meat. <laughs> Human Meat. That is disgusting. Meat space. <laughs> Do we have, <laughs> we're going to go back to it. Well, wow, what's meat. our next yeah, dish? What's, what's another dish we Ew, have? Ew, that was a dish. I'll go next. Um, I don't know how you follow that one with this, but, um, so my article has some intrigue and smuggling mystery and mystery. Um, so here, here's the, the title of the article. It says trail of slime leads German customs <laughs> to bags of giant snails. And this giant? is legit. Cause it's from AP associated press. Mm. So associated um, press, apparently we're in a, a Berlin airport here, and mm. German officials start following this trail of slime on the floor, um, and they mm. find a stash of a hundred giant African land snails, and uh, I think it was how many pounds? It was oh wait, so ninety three giant snails, twenty eight kilograms. Of course, this is European, so it's all the weird. None of us know, can do sure. it. <laughs> In, in parentheses, it says 62 pounds. So That's go, America. There you go. There you go. 62 pounds of fish and smoked meat Ew. and a suitcase full of rotting meat. So mm. um, someone so, had that was just misplaced all of their, their luggage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it you know, begs the question, how do you lose that many snails and that much meat? No kidding. I'm starting to think it was a prank. Mm. I'm starting to wonder if it was our missions team that just returned <laughs> just came back so. from Berlin. <laughs> maybe so. Who I mean, left their snails? Is it like a, I guess giant snails, is that like a delicacy? Yeah, uh, it's Yeah, so it's apparently it's this was go. coming to Street. Germany from Nigeria for an African goods store. They're African mm -hmm. snails. Right. But they must think about this. Snails, Street. you think small, right? I so do. Not necessarily. I've never seen a giant snail. Well, it says giant, so I'm assuming it's so it says by following the trail left by a twenty centimeter. That is once disgusting. Again, in parentheses, eight inches. So eight inch snail. Think That's about that. Snail. That's a big snail. Yeah. And this is not a slug. This is a snail. Right. Hmm. So aren't snails? Don't they have shells? Is they that the do. deal? I think is that the difference between slugs yeah. and snails? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Essentially. So there you go. Like There's an eight inch snail running around. You know what? Mm. I've in, seen one. SpongeBob. Gary. Gary Gary was a larger snail. That's in, true. He right. was a larger snail. I think he snail. was from Africa. <laughs> I'm not for I, sure. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know what part of the ocean SpongeBob yeah. lived in. But he, there's a good end to this story. South Africa. Like Bikini Bottom, um, South Africa. Johannesburg. Behind, besides, you know, the, the airport smelling like snails and a bunch of rotten fish and dead Ew. meat. Um, the snails were headed to an animal rescue service in Dusseldorf. No so, way. What's yeah. So <laughs> now they've sent these snails to animal rescue. Oh, that, okay. I thought you said no, 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 no. On their way. Oh, no. So they, now so they, they, the, the authorities have sent them to this animal rescue place and then they destroyed all of the meat. That's, yes. Not even yeah. just got rid of, they destroyed We're gonna it. We're going to burn it. Uh, <laughs> but why would you want to burn that? You would smell it. It's nasty. The How whole you thing is nasty. Uh, yeah. No, that's so funny. Also, yeah. it's like every store they have to like show that they were responsible yeah. with, you with know, the little animals. And somebody just showed up to work that day thinking oh the worst gosh. thing they were going to clean up was, yeah. you know, plane sickness. <laughs> no. And here's a snails. giant. Oh, that's so funny. Bag Ugh. of rotting meat and snails. And snails. Yeah. I, bet, I bet you at the airport you see just about a little bit of everything. Yeah. We'll have to ask the team if it smelled weird that day. I wonder yeah. if they experienced this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wonder if they were in the airport at the same time. This, is, this was out September 16th, so maybe. Mm. 
Usually that comes out a couple of days. I after, wonder, so I you know, know how a lot of times with these stories, there's just, there's not, there's missing information, right? Cause you just don't know. You don't know everything. I wonder if the meat was in there to feed the snails because there are carnivorous snails and usually they're the big ones. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. Maybe they were just trying to get to this. The snails were trying to escape to get to the meat. Maybe they could smell it. Or if they just like German food, mm. uh, who knows? It's all nasty. It's a yeah. delicacy. Interesting. <laughs> Anyways, those, that's a, that's your daily sn- snail story. That's your snail yeah. dish. That's truly a dish. <laughs> snail that's mail. the escargot snail dish. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had escargot? No. It is disgusting. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's slimy. It's gross. I mean, think of eating a slug. It's exactly what you would think. <sighs> that sounds terrible. Yeah, I don't know why people like it. I like, try it just to try it. Oh, that was you the thing. Eat I tried stuff. it. I've eaten. It's true. Yeah. You eat I cat it. food and dog food. Oh, wait, no, you just I don't have eat dog it. Food. I just try it. <laughs> He's like, I no, don't I eat don't it. eat like it. A, no, I don't eat it, but I've tried it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing, Alan. <laughs> Do you uh, it's not like regularly I, I consume? Yeah, it's not All right. part of my regular diet. Let's take, a, let's take a walk down, <laughs> down memory lane. Do you remember when we were on our way back from the women's retreat in Tulsa a number of years ago and we were hungry because we hadn't stopped for lunch? So we reached into the bag that we had picked up from all the stuff oh, on yeah. the tables and we pulled out these beef jerky sticks. Yeah. Except they weren't beef jerky. No. They were cat treats. They were cat treats. Oh, funny. Almost ate a bunch of cat treats. They had put cat treats in all the ladies' bags and it's like, I wonder Why? how many women ate those That's and thought they were jerky. Hilarious. Because they took, that was back when they would just take any donation oh, man. and give it away. And apparently some company was like, yeah, you can have all these cat jerky. <laughs> Some brave lady in her church needs yeah. to let us know. She's like, ate it. That's well, delicious. and that's the thing. Like, I bet you're yeah. learning right now. I was saying, I was going to say, I bet <laughs> you almost. There's a listener from our church that's a woman that went to that retreat and went, "I ate cat treats." Like, yeah. he's just Multiple. now learning. They were delicious. That they ate cat, <laughs> they ate cat oh. treats. That is funny. All right, James, what's your dish? Uh, so we know what your dish is. You know what my dish I is, don't. and here's the reason why I picked this is because it's so absurd, and it kind of goes back to the lack of yeah. information, right? Our dishes are so gross. the headline reads: Doctors find 55, 55 batteries in woman's body, Ugh. the highest number, or the highest reported number ever. Fifty-five. She's going for that record. Yeah, Guinness fifty-five books. batteries. And then there's a picture of the batteries. She read about it, and it's Guinness disgusting. They're like double A and triple A batteries. You know, and oh, so without going into the like, and there's an x-ray of it too, which is like mortifying, but like without, <laughs> without basically she passed some of the batteries normally, you know, like you would digest batteries. Yep. They had to go in and remove most of them, but 55 wow. batteries, 55 batteries. She should have just waited until they ran out. Like Get it? this is a very emotionally charged story. Um, <laughs> So here's my question. Dad. I've been waiting for that. <laughs> I find this story revolting. Oh my god. I gosh. do too. And here, but here's the thing. Nowhere in this entire article does it explain why she ate 55 Listen, batteries. I can you finish don't... that sentence for you. She was going for the record and she ca- she did it. She did it. She read it on Guinness Book of World Records. She, she did it. it up and you you don't need one, a reason to eat I... batteries these days. <laughs> I don't know. You used to have to have one. Mm. Now you don't need a reason for these things. Maybe also, she was just feeling like run down. She needed to stop. charge back she up. Needed to <laughs> she needed to recharge. Oh my gosh. And took that way too seriously. Yeah. She was like, man, my energy levels are low. What if I eat this battery? Oh, I feel so much better. Isn't there some kind of science that like battery acid and stomach acid oh, yeah. would not work? Oh, I work? can't imagine. And if you look at the pictures of the batteries. I'm not going to be looking at those. Oh, I will not. It, I mean, they look like some of them have been in there for a while. Yeah, I mean, like they're rusty. You know that crusty stuff that batteries get on them when they've been in your remote too long? Ooh. That stuff is all over them except it's black. I mean, like it is. Ugh. I can't even imagine Ugh. swallowing. And some of them actually look brand new. I bet you could pop that sucker in a remote control and it would work just fine. But maybe like, she was trying to save it later for like a Game Boy. Maybe just like <laughs> always have batteries on her. It was her time Game capsule. Boy. You she know, at Christmas like, time they say batteries are not included. So if I just keep yeah. some with me, I mean, like, Ooh. but seriously, what's wrong with this person that okay, they so ate? They were saying that they were show. waiting for her to pass some of them, and this is yeah. like, oh yeah. My there was an old show on Cut TLC called My Strange Addiction. Yeah, that's what I said. And that. if you've ever watched it. My wife made me watch That's one scary. episode and right. I was like, I was this is revolting and I don't ever like want to watch it. Like washing detergent is So the episode I watched, this lady just ate paper, uh, toilet paper. She just, yeah. and eat a, just every day. At least that She'd go is through like, two rolls a day. Yeah. At I, least I, that's I, biodegradable. Just No, eating. it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't dissolve in your body. I got to get my dog. So the, she had to get her stomach Your dog pumped. toilet paper? Yeah, he's so cute though. She had to get her stomach like. Pumped? Pumped. 
because oh, it was just staying actually, in her stomach. She, she had to get it. her stomach plunged. Yeah. is really what it would be. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I mean, this is one of those stories where I really full of puns. I really want to know more. <laughs> I what's, honestly don't. But what's super funny to me though, and I, and I, I'm I'm not making light of this. It's just the fact that it was placed on this article. <laughs> At the bottom of the article, it says if you're struggling with an eating disorder, I don't think I don't that qualifies know, no, no. as an eating disorder. I no. think she had something wrong with her. That qualifies yeah. as something else. That, that's like if you have a mental disorder. Yeah. If you have something else going on, call us. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you were to eat batteries, what would be your preference? Like brand? <laughs> not not uh, involved. <laughs> let's go Durso. <laughs> Not I'm not much of an energizer. What are those little round circles? Like ones. the battery. The, That's yeah. the only the, the, the one CR, I use. CR CR batteries, yeah. You know, though, I just saw something where um, a kid had accidentally swallowed those because they put they make those little tiny ones yeah. in yeah. toys. Yeah. And it was if that, off of a Barbie doll or yes, something. Yes, like and if that part pops open, you can easily consume it. So maybe she's just been playing with some toys and accidentally, accidentally swallowed 55, 55. batteries. Yeah. A 1990s game you know, boy. I, what yeah. it made me think yeah. of is, you know, when you're little. <laughs> You, you do silly things, right? Like I know somebody who got a gummy bear stuck way up their nose. And yeah. I, when Makes I was tiny, sense. shoved a corn kernel in my dad's ear while he was sleeping and it started to sprout and caused ear Ew. problems. But like, this was an adult woman mm-hmm. who ate yeah. 55 batteries. Mm-hmm. Here's the real question. Obviously. Or I guess not a question, but just, we're just glad that it wasn't D batteries. It's double A's and triple A's. Could you yeah. imagine if it was D size yeah. batteries? How do you not even for swallow pass, those? Sure. She wouldn't and have been How able many to walk. listeners know what D size batteries are now? They still exist. I know, me. but not very often. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. They're in batteries. Or they're in batteries. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're in batteries. They're in the battery section yeah. at the store. It's been in the batteries this whole um, time. <laughs> they're in flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> and and boom boxes. <laughs> oh my. Oh my gosh. Boom boxes. There Boom, Boom boxes. Wait, let me. You, you don't know what a flashlight is. Let me guess. You just use your phone as a flashlight. Uh, yeah. No. Use my headlamp <laughs> anytime I need it. Just whip it out. All it's, right, take us to the right. deep dish. Huh? It's the deep dish. I thought this was uh, interesting. This is uh, about Lecrae, and uh, who is Lecrae? Yeah. We, we probably need to introduce a few things. Let me read the title first. Lecrae endorses healthy deconstruction that embraces scripture. Christ himself did this. And so uh, Lecrae, uh, he's a famous Christian rapper, right? Mm-hmm. But he's also, he kind of bridged over into mainstream. Isn't like, he's like really popular, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so a lot of people know him, not just uh, church people. Yeah, he's right. a speaker. He's done He's some, authored a yeah, author. book or two now. He's a very well-rounded I individual. Actually, I actually <laughs> like went through some of his songs just to see if I knew him. I'm like, oh, like I yeah. know more of his songs than I realized. Good. Yeah, he's got, a, so. he's got quite a few good ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're very proud of you, Dad. I am. That rehab album, though, go back and listen to that. that or Gravity, that's mm-hmm. a great album. Yeah. He came and did a, a free concert wow. at the Embassy Suites like a long time ago. Hmm. But it was great. So that's who he is. Cool story. Thanks. <laughs> so... <laughs> We've, we've done dollars. a topic. We've done an episode on deconstruction. Mm-hmm. Kids, would anyone like to de- describe what deconstruction is? Could what is David. deconstruction? Um, it's taking parts of what you believe and tearing them apart, and trying to find why you believe them and if you actually believe them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but we have a whole series of doubt and deconstructionism go back and listen to it yeah. we get deeper into that right here on the real talk podcast yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so yep so he's talking about deconstruction it's a very I, I think for most of us we know what that is by now um and everything but obviously very popular topic uh, among younger people and like you said it's just basically kind of taking your faith apart it's just like if you had a shed in your backyard and you wanted to move it somewhere else, you would take it apart, put it back together again. And uh, obviously that gives a lot of us concern, you know what I mean? Uh, especially when you see some of the books and some of the things that kind of focus in on that, where we're having a lot of young people walk away from their faith because other people are helping them deconstruct. But yeah. Yeah. but I, I like, there's a lot in this article that I like. There's probably one or two things in here that I would push back on. But let's look at the article real quick. Um, so basically, the article is just a series of Lecrae's tweets. And 
That's all. That's journalism is. nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Just copy and paste. Yeah. Embed. Screenshot tweet. tweets because yeah. they can delete them. Yeah. That's true. And so I can't go through all of them, but basically, like in the first one, he's saying a lot of Christians are afraid of deconstruction. I've personally gone through it. And, uh, and let me give you some food for thought. There are two types of deconstruction. So this is kind of the overview right here mm-hmm. uh, happening in the church. One is healthy and the other is dangerous. Purple door. Uh, and so I think we would, for the most part, agree with him. We were, we were talking about this within our series, that there is a healthy aspect of taking a step back and assessing your faith and even aspects of your faith. And, and really seeing, one, do I believe this? Is this accurate? Uh, every denomination, we, we seem to emphasize one thing, maybe sometimes to the detriment of another. Mm-hmm. Like Baptists are known for maybe believing in God the Father and the Son, but, oh, where's the Holy Spirit? You know, mm-hmm. And so even taking a step back and what is the Holy Spirit and, and those kind of things. But So there's a healthy aspect and a dangerous, and I think he does a great job of communicating that. Did you guys have a chance to look at the article? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I really appreciated the way um, that he just explained the two different routes you can go with it and kind of what they stem from, because I think mm-hmm. a lot of people, um, well, the people that I've noticed like who go through deconstruction um, can't identify really what it's, what their deconstruction is stemming from. And so when you, when you don't have a goal, in mind because you don't know the whole purpose for your deconstruction, mm-hmm. then your your effort to rebuild isn't really there. And so then you just deconstruct and you never rebuild your faith. So I appreciated Lecrae kind of laying some of those out. And I think he has like the upper hand a little bit in explaining some of this because there are so many people who are believers who follow him and then also not since mm-hmm. he reaches into, you know, both groups. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he comes across really well and just very, authentic and real. And so sometimes he probably has a leg up more than we do trying to explain the same thing, even using the same words. So I was appreciative that he decided to take this opportunity to just talk about it. And even that he's been there before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, one thing that he said that at first I had to really think about it at first I was thinking, I'm not sure if I agree with that, but I think I do now, but he says nine times out of 10, this typically, uh, this type of unhealthy deconstruction begins with church hurt, racism, sexism, abuse of power, et cetera, uh, give way to the need uh, to make sense of things. And at first I was thinking, is that really why? And I was kind of thinking of my own life, you know, mm-hmm. like we, we typically do. But as I began reading a little bit more about his own life and some of the conversations he's had, I'm like, you know what, this may be probably more common than, than what I realize. And uh, yeah, I think we don't want to admit it because then, especially for us, you know, we're all staff members at a church. Mm-hmm. It's like, we don't want to admit that church and church people could be the cause of mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. deconstructing their faith because then that basically says we're guilty, you know, cause we're part of that. Right. But I, I think he's right. You mm-hmm. know, I really do. And I mean, I don't know if you guys have experienced it. I've experienced church hurt yeah. and I've experienced hurt from believers and I've caused hurt for right. people, you know, uh, inadvertently, not on purpose, but like, I think it's a very real thing that people get Absolutely. hurt by the church. They get hurt by people in the church and it's what causes them to start to question, mm-hmm. you know, and that hurt can even come in the form of not necessarily like an incident or something traumatic, but like, uh, you know, I, I think of, of people that I know that they just grew up in church. Well, they grew up in church. They never really experienced anything outside of church. They don't know anything different. And so they get to a later point in their life and they're like, do I really understand what this is all about? And that's almost like a form of church hurt because they, they've they never really, they were so sheltered, they were so like tucked in, hidden away into the fold that they don't really understand why they believe what they believe. Yeah. They just went along with it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I think I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I think church hurt is very real. And what I am going to say might sound harsh, but I think sometimes people use it as an excuse because mm-hmm. it's the easy one. Mm-hmm. And so... I have found myself growing kind of callous towards that being the reason why someone deconstructs. Yeah. But I know that I also need to be softened so that I can continue conversations with them. So mm-hmm. that the phrase church hurt, I really struggle with. And, yeah. and especially well, being in is, ministry. So there's kind of two truths. One, I think everyone that has been to church for any length of time has been hurt by someone in the church. Therefore yeah. church hurt. Mm-hmm. Everybody has pastor Wes even brought this up in his sermon. Uh, was it this last Sunday or the Sunday before? Mm-hmm. And he just said, he says, 
we've all, I've been church hurt. I've been hurt mm-hmm. by plenty of people in the church. And if you've ever served as a pastor in a church before, especially a senior pastor, I mean, it happens a lot, you yeah. know, and so... Uh, I think if anyone can can understand church hurt, a pastor can mm-hmm. understand church hurt for sure. But the reality is, is there are true situations where legitimate people are hurt by the church. Yeah. The mistake in what he's saying here is is don't uh, don't allow that hurt, you know, to affect the way that you feel about Christ and His church. Right. It's mm-hmm. a person problem or a people problem. It's not a a church problem uh, for the most part. Mm-hmm. So um, that was good. Um, the only thing that I really <laughs> feedback on as if he would be listening here, although we are pretty big. I mean, we had a breakout <laughs> moment this week. We had, we've had Don't over 1600 it... views on one of our short videos. Yeah, so we're kind of a big deal. Yeah. We're yeah. kind of a big Don't deal. celebrate. We are. A big we're not deal. done yet, but uh, <laughs> got a long way to go. <laughs> That's right. Um, Anyways, uh, was the title, and I'm not, uh, and they, they make it as a quote here, and so maybe Lecrae said this, but I don't think Jesus deconstructed. I mean, he mm-hmm. deconstructing is that you're taking you're taking an assessment of your own faith and what you believe, and since he is divine and he does know all. I don't think he was surprised and had to take a step back and reevaluate what he believed. I think well, and it says in there he did it by deconstructing what the Pharisees believed. Yeah, right. I think it it's says more in the context of the article. He's yeah. trying to say that Jesus I just wouldn't call that deconstructing. Others, not himself. I yeah. wouldn't call that deconstructing, and no. and that kind of goes back to the whole word of deconstructing right. and what that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he didn't self deconstruct. Yeah, he basically was correcting. He, he wrecked Ralph those Pharisees. Yeah, and so. Um, but but I did think it was interesting. That's the only thing that I would say. Minor silly little thing there. But but um, you know, even though Jesus was fully man, he was fully God. Mm-hmm. And so uh, just that would be my only little quip there. <laughs> I do like how he said though. It's you know like when we were talking about church hurt and things like that. It says mm-hmm. when individuals experience church hurt, uh, they often look outside of God for mm-hmm. answers and find themselves being thrown around by every wind and wave of doctrine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's hard, like for those that are really hurt by the church, is to actually look back to what yeah. the church believes yeah. to help them. I, mm-hmm. That's the last place you want to look. Mm-hmm. That is the place that you have yeah. to look. And if I remember correctly, I don't know if it was back um, like in 2014 or when he was obviously younger, younger in the faith. One, um, he's described as someone who felt like an outsider just among rap artists. I mean, oh, yeah. he's mm-hmm. he's a Christian rap artist, so one of his songs, "Outsiders." I listened to the lyrics of it and I was like, wow, this is powerful. And I was actually equating it to his experience with the church. Uh, that's what I was assuming. Mm-hmm. And from what I understand, it was actually towards feeling like an outsider from other rappers. But I think he's kind of been someone who has stood out among all people, you mm-hmm. know, uh, in a way, and probably has had arrows from both sides. And being a young man at that time and making a stand the way that he did and probably mm-hmm. felt misunderstood from a lot of different people, mm-hmm. um, I can see why he had to take a step back and reevaluate, like, why are my brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, you know, throwing shots at me? Mm-hmm. And uh, we forget that uh, even when we disagree with someone, I was talking with uh, an individual about a book that was written by a young man who was going through a lot of struggles and everything else. And he, and uh, his view wasn't a very popular view uh, for a Christian, I guess, or for Christians struggling with this particular issue. But I just had to say, just remember this person's on a journey, you know, too. Yeah. And his book might be just a snapshot of where he's at today. And if he were to write another book 10 years from now, you know, maybe you would see a little bit more maturity in that belief. Mm-hmm. But we got to give people a little bit, you know, a little bit more grace than what we do instead of calling mm-hmm. them a heretic or this or mm-hmm. that. That that word heretic kind of mm-hmm. I understand that there's true heretics, but I think that can be thrown over, around a little mm-hmm. bit too much as well. But I think anyways. it's cool here, too, is that he's talking about deconstruction. Mm-hmm. And I mean, for those that are going through deconstruction, um, or those who are confused by it, like we said, we've had a show about this before, but to kind of sum that up, it's more of a less you are testing your faith to see if it's actually worth its weight. Mm-hmm. You know, like, right. And so you're going through the things that you believe in, mm-hmm. seeing if they match up with what the Bible says. But it's important for those that are going through deconstruction to reconstruct 
Mm-hmm. Don't stop at the part where you just yeah. deconstruct everything and like take everything out that's religious. Um, but it's important to reconstruct with scripture. And mm-hmm. it, he says that in his, in what he was arguing in this thread, um, that it's, you know, like many movements from the Reformation to the Civil Rights Movement involved deconstruction using scripture and then reconstruction. Reconstructing, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's important for us to, yes, test our faith, but also make sure it is absolutely filled with, in those times where that faith doesn't hold up to what the Bible is saying or the things that you're testing with, fill it with things that are scripture and fill it with things that can build your faith back up in mm-hmm. the right way. Um, Cause that's extremely important. Cause that a lot of the times when people deconstruct, they're just looking to deconstruct things that are, they don't agree with. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, really cool. Cool article. If you don't know much about Lecrae, you need to look him up. I think he's a great, just a great example of what it means to live out your faith, even to the point to where you're okay to have criticism. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes from both sides, we live in a world where we quickly choose sides. And I think that we can be guilty of just blindly following what everyone in the crowd is saying. And that goes on both sides, whether you're talking politics or whether you're talking about faith, different things like that. So I think he's um, someone to admire and Mm -hmm. learn from, and so I'm going to start listening to his music. Do it. Wow. Yeah. There's yeah. some good stuff. Alan's going to start. Rapping. You never know. Yeah, and also saying yeet. Yeah. yeet. I can't wait to yeah. see his fashion change, too. You yeah. just never know. I might come in next week looking I just different. hope he starts remembering his keys, too. Yeah. <laughs> Me, too. And his wallet. Yeah. Ashley would love that as well. <laughs> awesome. Anything else? It was good? It was All right. Good. Well, guys, job, thank you Craig. so much for watching and listening. Uh, if you have not already done so, please hit the like button. Make sure and follow us. And uh, if you enjoyed today's content, please share it with someone that you think might be encouraged by it. But we'll see you next week and have have a good one. Bye. See you.